edition of Let's Learn Giant Steps with Dr. Levin. No, I'm not a real doctor. I lost my medical license after I delivered a baby and tried to fit its whole head in my mouth just to win a bet. But let's not talk about that. In this new series, I'm going to walk you through step by step of uh, through the process of learning one of the most uh, famously difficult pieces of music ever called Giant Steps by John Coltrane. The reason I'm doing this is not because necessarily I think everyone should learn Giant Steps, but rather I would like to help people s learn how to approach something so difficult and intimidating as Giant Steps and show some good work ethic and some good methods to tackling a piece that's so complex. In case you're not familiar with Giant Steps, it's a jazz uh it's a jazz standard um that's very very fast with chords that change key very frequently pretty much constantly and it's just super fast and so it's very well it's very famous for being a really hard piece of music to improvise over and just play in general and uh, a lot of people nerd out on giant steps and you know really get into learning it because it's a great musical challenge and the reason I think it's good to learn giant steps or a tune like giant steps is it really helps you as a guitarist get really familiar with the fretboard on a deeper level where you're looking at this thing and you are seeing you're not seeing a fretboard the fretboard is essentially disappearing as my teacher David Tronza would say it's disappearing and what you're doing instead is you're you're seeing more closely to what you're hearing. It's it's sort of hard to describe, but I'm sure you've all felt it in some ways. If you take something that was very basic, uh, it's, you know, that you learned a long time ago and play it, it's not such a thought through thing. And so tunes like Giant Steps help the whole fretboard start to feel that way. Uh, through these lessons, I'm going to um, emphasize first and foremost the necessary the necessity of patience. We're not going to try to I'm not going to try to teach you or learn myself everything there is about giant steps in one video. Instead, I want to pace things out and just take things slowly. There's no hurry. We want to learn this thing solid from the ground up so that by the time we build it up to speed and it's really blazing fast. We feel confident and ready and we're not just struggling to stay on the horse the whole time. So for this first look at Giant Steps, I just want to talk about the essential first steps of learning any jazz standard, which are to first learn the melody and the chords. So here's what Giant Steps looks like. Here are the chords and melody notated for you. And as you can see, it's not a very long form. It's just uh, 16 bars. And the chords are somewhat daunting because they change very regularly. And so for this first week, I just want to encourage everyone who's going to follow along to learn the melody and learn the chords which is not hard at a slow tempo. You just have to you know, figure out where all the notes are and find voicings that you like. And as this series progresses, I'll show you cool alternate voicings and 
um, stuff you can do with the melody. But learning the melody and the chords is definitely the most important first step to learning a tune. You might wonder why is it the first step? Well, because the chords provide you a foundation for how the harmony sounds and helps you start to internalize just the, the form in general. If you can hear the chords in your head and you're very familiar with how they feel, it's really a lot easier to avoid getting lost when you're playing through the tune. And why learn the melody first? Well, the melody offers a really good guide for the improvisation in general. So learning the melody really well will help guide you through the changes as you're learning to play over them. So this week I've got a backing track for download below the video that is a really slow, cool uh, backing track for you to practice giant steps over. You can practice playing the melody over this, practice playing along with the chords, and you can also start to try improvising over it. Um, for improvising, I will also help you out this week uh, just by saying a really general thing about giant steps. This is a very general look and we're going to get more and more specific as these lessons progress. But for a really general first glance at how do you play over these chords, giant steps is divided into three separate keys if you want to look on a really broad level. The chord progression hits upon three different key signatures. The first key signature that it hits is B major, then G major, then E flat major. Those are the three keys, B major, G major, E flat major. Now it jolts through those keys very quickly. And what I've done here is I've highlighted um, in different colors where each key happens. And it's just a first look. There's much more to be said about this, about how you play over it. but. For starters, you can try playing in the keys as I've color-coded them. Red is for B major, green is for G major, and yellow will be for E flat major. And uh, over parts of the music where you see red, you, say, you play in B major, green, G major, yellow, E flat major, etc. So good luck following this color-coded color guide. I'm going to try to break out of needing tricks like color coding and break out of things like that as these lessons progress and make sure that you really understand the essence of every single chord and every single moment in the piece. But this week we're going to focus on just looking at it in this general sense and playing it very slowly. Very, very slowly. So I'm very excited about this series. This particular tune, I spent you know a whole year working on it. I transcribed John Coltrane's solo. And I spent a lot of time working on it. And at first I was like, why am I doing this? It's because my teacher, Bruce Bartlett, uh, told me to. Um, I was like, why am I transcribing this solo? Why am I working on this tune? I don't even like how it sounds. That was, you know, that's just my opinion. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's, it, you know, it wasn't, it's not a piece of music that resonates with me on a super high level initially. But as I got into it more, I started seeing that, wow, this is really helping my playing. This is really taking me to a new level. And it made me appreciate the depth of John Coltrane's other work that's much simpler. Just the fact that he got into this really, you know, complex mindset and then also just freed himself and, you know, made albums like A Love Supreme. So I hope you enjoy the backing track and uh, have fun starting out Giant Steps. Remember, take it slow. It's going to be, it's not easy. No one ever said this was going to be easy. It's not easy, but it's totally a reasonable thing to want to, to do. It's manageable. You can definitely play giant steps. It's not easy, but it's manageable. And we're going to get through it and kick some booty. So I'll see you next time on Let's Play Giant Steps or whatever this series is called. And please don't sue me for musical malpractice.